What's going on guys? If you're finding me for the first time, my name is James Collect. I am an eBay reseller. I resell stuff on eBay so that I can afford to buy nerdy things like Pokemon cards, toys, video games, um, and other various nerdy stuff. It's currently Sunday afternoon for a couple of sales. Let's see what's sold. This beautiful clock sold for $134.99 plus shipping. I've actually been using it. I love it. My wife hates it, which means I had to list it. But I went high and got the price that I wanted. Storage spot number one, my loft. GTA 4 on a PS3, $4.99 all in. On the Nintendo Switch, Minecraft, $24.99 plus shipping. It looks like these might be the boots in questions. Let me just double check. Yes, it is $64.99 plus shipping. On the PlayStation 2, $6.99 all in for The Simpsons Road Rage. Pretty minty as well. £22.49 plus shipping for this lovely YSL collared polo. Don't know why I said that on all polos collared. We've sold Lego Bionicle B4 for £14.99 plus shipping. £27.99 plus shipping for that. I've walked past it four times and I panicked. Went into the garage, as you saw in a clip before. Thought it'd be in there, but it wasn't and it was right in front of my face. I checked here three times and it reappeared on the fourth. And it should go without saying, there are links down below for absolutely everything that I use. And you can also become a channel member where you receive no benefits apart from boosting my ego.
In A5, we've sold Thomas Tank Engine, $24.99, plus signed for shipping with all of the bits inside. $9.99, all in for this lovely Sega Mega Drive console wallet. Owes me a couple of quid. Board game, Emojinary, $12.99, all in. <sighs> it's quite a heavy one as well. Lovely little sale. Some micro land figures for Zelda. Paid a couple of quid from Toys R Us when they were closing down and sold my last set. $9.99, plus shipping, I think. Thing. And at the bottom of this tray, there's a load of Transformers. These ones here. Is it these ones? Ooh, you know what? It's not these ones. Bloody hell, where are they? It's a £60 sale, so I've really got to find them. You know what? I've got a sneaky suspicion that my parents, I vaguely remember them being there. Thankfully, I'm going there tomorrow to drop my daughter off, so I'll have another look in the morning. I might come and have to borrow a bag and put it all back in, if that's okay. Because I may have broken it. Uh, cool, I used to play that. Then go back into the big bag, it? Thank you. I completely understand. Okay. Jesus, I might be a minute if I don't have a bag. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's a bit heavy, that one.
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and an empty case. This is 99.99 River Song Sonic Screwdriver Different packaging Look, 70 quid 110, 169, 100. So I saw this a few weeks ago, maybe last week, but they've now got a 50% off all coats and jackets, so a half price. That is worth picking up. Just gotta flick through, make sure there's not anything else missing out on. I am looking forward to this. So for those of you who don't know, I used to work in London quite a lot when I was younger, mainly West London, like the Hammersmith area. And today I'm in, uh, I'm in Shepherd's Bush. And I know on Goldhawk Road, I think it's number 63 and it used to be called Vivian's a lovely little takeaway place that does lovely takeaway food now it used to be you'd go in this is going back like five years ago you'd you'd buy a Tupperware box pre-filled with whatever you'd want but he's now changed it he's now got a little bit at the front where you can pick what you want and then he'll go in and heat it up etc but this was like four pound sweet and sour chicken egg fried rice absolutely delicious so I'm over here doing a not very nice job. It's waiting for the guy to actually meet me on site. I would tell you, but um, yeah, it's not particularly pleasant. Shouldn't say long though. I just need a guy to actually turn up. But in the meantime, ah, I'm gonna enjoy my very, very hot chicken. Sold two Game Boys, 49.99 each plus shipping. One with Rave Race and one with F1 something or other. Uh, I think I've got one more listed. I've got one box ready to list one unbox ready to list and then three which just have vertical lines but i don't really want to do them myself because people quite enjoy doing them and annoyingly i'm in storage container number two to grab one item and one item only and that is my penultimate copy of minecraft on 
to switch for twenty four ninety nine, I think, plus shipping. A couple of bits from the garage, really easy to remember. We've sold a pin badge, which should be Predator versus Alien for four ninety nine all in, which looks a little bit like that. I did have some gold ones, but we definitely lost them when I moved house, which is really annoying. And then C two should be a pair of Clark's trainers. Let's just move that over there. And these sold for $24.99 plus signed for shipping. It's gonna be another busy one. A1, A2, and A4, let's go. So only listed yesterday, sold for $94.99 plus shipping. We've got a Wallace and Gromit playset, and it's missing one Wallace. In A2, there should hopefully be a, there we go, Doctor Strange pin badge set, £9.49, all in. And then in A4, there should be a Tyco charger, which will be this one, which sold for 12 no 14 pound 24 plus shipping it's going out via the gsp to italy we've sold this lovely panasonic dmr es 30 v for 118 pounds 74 plus shipping pets my kitten family for some reason plus shipping three pound 79 plus shipping why did i do that definitely forgot about this one 19.99 plus shipping for this collector's mug from 1994. Okay then, here is the haul for the week. I'm not gonna do any packaging tonight because I spent the last three hours in Toyota having not even an argument, kind of an argument. It was a very civilized argument. I'll talk you through all that at the end if you uh, wanna stick around for that, you never know. Uh, but I missed a couple of items from the car boot last weekend. They were in my rucksack and I just completely forgot they existed. Two pound, Command and Conquer on N64. Three pound for uh, very dirty Watford and also Man United for 2017 2018. Lovely jubbly. Uh, then I don't know the order to be honest with you. I think the gaming was at the start, so these were all tucked away in the changing area, ready to be sent away to somewhere else. And I saw, I honestly I only saw like the a PS2 game, and I asked to have a look because they were going to go elsewhere. And they were going to charge me £2 for everything. I felt guilty. I said, just call it a fiver, because if they would have gone out onto the shelves, I would have bought them. So we've got an empty Mario Kart on the PlayStation 2. We've got a network access disc, which I presume is in there, because there's something rattling around. There we go. Lovely. Quite, quite nice inside, actually. Probably because no one ever used them. Uh, we've got PS2 Tekken Tag, PS2 GTA 3, PS1. Syndicate Wars, PS1 Siphon Filter, Mega Drive Blue Label Worms, Mega Games 1. Now that's, I think that's complete. Yeah, that's complete. So there's a mixture of complete and not complete. The Mega Drives I will be potentially adding to my personal collection. Basically, take the ones that I need. Uh, Street Racer Blue Label, that's missing. Yeah, that's missing the instructions. Then we've got Dawn of War, seven game pack, brand new and sealed, $4.99 this was, which is mad because the Dawn of War games are absolutely amazing. Uh, played, 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 played. I've played all of them. But yeah, £2, awesome. Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams, PS2, PS1, Resi 2, and G Police. So they were a fiver, absolutely beautiful. Then I think I'll pick this up next. This was £4.50. I believe it's vintage. It looks vintage to me. Vintage. Um, oh, I missed a couple of games. Hang on. Vigilante on the Master System. I've got loads of Master System games and I'm not even doing them. I need to go through and, and get rid of what I don't want. So there's that and Double Dragon. That's missing its manual. XL Vintage Umbro. Nice and plain. I'm going to message Ricky, but I think it might be too plain for him. But it is his size. £2 for this Casio, which I think these are out now. And I think they're, they're a couple of quid. And nothing major. But yeah, £2. I bought this for... It was on for £12.95 and it's 50% off. And let me just double check. £12.25 and it's 50% off. So I was eyeing it up when it's full price and I was honestly I was just waiting for a reduction. So half price is lovely. Then literally as I was about to pay, someone walked in with a bag 
a bag f- full of toys and I saw He-Man legs just sort of poking out everywhere. So I said to the manager, I have that. Um, so she went behind. She put a choking hazard label on the bag. She put a price tag of £7.50 for everything. So we've got Lion-O, Master of the Universe. They're, none of these are complete, complete. Master of the Universe, which I think that's missing its mask. I've got the, the saddle for it. Lion-O, Master of the Universe, A-Team. I've never picked up A-Team stuff before, and I've picked up like four different occasions now over the last month or two. It's mad. We've got this uh, Collider Forest car. Who's it made by? Matchbox. Masters of the Universe. 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 A team with a strap, which I don't think I've got any with uh, with any accessories so far. Masters of the Universe, and potentially the best item is this Voltron. Now it's die cast, believe it or not, that weighs a little bit. But every single one I've seen, they're either broken or missing something. So I've seen ones where uh, these propellers are missing and i've seen ones where the hands are missing and incomplete they're going for like 20 30 quid so the fact this is actually complete i've got genuinely no idea i mean there's a few nicks to the back but in case anyone's wondering it is gb73 so i don't know what i'm going to do with that but all in all brilliant week okay so story time with the car in case anyone cares uh but we bought a a car second hand uh, two months and ten days ago, nineteen grand on finance. So we, we put a deposit down. So basically, we had a vehicle. Then the wife was in an RTA. Wife is fine. Her vehicle was written off. We was then given a lump sum. We've then used that to buy a slightly older vehicle, but a bigger vehicle. Uh, so it's it's not particularly old. It's it was only done fifty three thousand miles when we bought it. And we've done 2,000 miles in two months, 10 days. One of those trips was actually from us going down to West Wittering. Now, when we bought the car, there was a nice little warning light saying, oh, tyre pressure is a bit funny. Uh, and they said, don't worry about it. We are going to give it an MOT because it's due one, uh, because they need to have a certain amount of the MOT left on it if they're going to sell a vehicle. So they did an MOT on a day. So it basically means they might have put some air in it, and then they probably would have wiped it off the system. Although we've found that just putting air in all of the tyres does actually get rid of the error because there is an issue with the tyres. So eight days after we purchased the vehicle, it might have been seven, seven or eight days after purchasing the vehicle, it went back to them because the, the light came on again. And they said, oh, no, nothing's wrong, Mr. Kalex. Uh, on your way, sir. Uh, so they sent us on our way. They cleared the message again, pumped up the tyres, and sent us on our way. And then guess what? It did it again about three weeks later. Uh, so we thought, okay, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll pump the tires back up. We was making uh, notes of the dates and the tire pressure, etc. So they were going down to, a, to about 25 PSI, which is not where it should be. Uh, so it went in today and there was like, oh yes, um, well, You've got a nail in one of the tyres, which given that could have been us in the, the last two months and 10 days since we've had the vehicle. Oh, and um, two of the other tyres uh, leaking air around the, um, what's the gubbin called? I don't know, around that thing. And then looking at the the tyres, they're all cracked. So they're, they're perishing because it might have been sat there not doing a lot for a year or so um which i'm quite annoyed about because if they they, they weren't i mean if we hadn't paid like almost 20 grand for a car i'd understand the tires being a little bit shit but it was 20 grand and the tires were a little bit shit so uh but there was that then obviously the nail in the tire means that it would be an mot failure and there's also another bit back of the car which I presume is like it's the arm where which holds the axle for the rear tires. Apparently, there's a, a rubber grommet in that which has perished. 
enough to make it an MOT failure. Bear in mind, the day we bought the car, it had an MOT. So it didn't flag up on that. It wasn't like, this is gonna require a, like sorting soon, nothing. So it's gone from being in the green zone to in the red zone in 2000 miles or two months, 10 days. So I was like, no, I'm not having that. They What they've basically done is they've thrown it on the forecourt and they've like patched everything up to, to try and get a nice quick sale. So I went down there today um, after work. So I went to Watford, London, and then back locally to myself. And I went down there and I, I said, look, this, this isn't on. Um, what's going on? We've done, I thought it was three months we had the vehicle for, but it was, it was even less than that. I said, uh, and their argument was, well, when someone's doing the MOT, they they might be slightly lenient on certain things. I was like, well, that's fine. But something like that does not go from it's okay in an MOT pass to, oh, okay, if you get an MOT now, we're going to fail you. So I wasn't having any of it. So I sat down there for, for three three hours. And I said, look, it's not good enough. Um, I, I want to I take this further. Oh, if you want to take this further, you've got to speak to your sales rep. Um, so I spoke to him. He's only like in his 20s. And he said, I will get everything sorted. So as far as he's concerned, in my opinion, he's in the clear. He said, okay, this, this, and this is wrong. We're going to send it to the uh, the service station at the back of the, the unit, and they'll fix whatever is wrong with it. So he, as far as I'm concerned, he's in the clear. The issue is the service department where they do the repairs and the MOT, because I, I think they've gone tables here and they've done that. So... Um, I sat, I, I was ignored for about an hour. So the sales guy was talking to me uh, and he said, I'm just going to go and get the, uh, see if we can get the, the service manager. So he went, I sat there for an hour and 20 minutes. And then I, I went back up. I said, oh, by the way, um, we didn't get an MOT certificate when you sold us the vehicle. Uh, and then there's also a service check thing that they do. So we didn't get one of those. I don't know if that's standard practice. That we don't get one of those but we didn't get one of those. And also I've been waiting a while and no one's actually come out. So the guy that I first saw came out, uh, and he was like, okay, Mr. Klex, um, we've, we've done some checks and it and it turns out uh, this 980 pound bit of what we was going to charge you to fix everything is actually covered by warranty, uh, which it, it, it wasn't. It's just, I think they wanted me out um, and maybe they were in the wrong. I'm going to go with the latter, well, I'll go with both so the next section is the tires so the one with the <coughs> i hope you've cut that bit out the one with the the nailing we take full responsibility for that could have happened at any point in the last two months and 10 days and we wouldn't have known about it it's just one of those things my issue is with the other two tires which are cracked and they are leaking air they should not have been put or left on a 20 grand car for someone to purchase for them <laughs> to be continually bringing up faults on the vehicle because we were sold as oh it's just a little fault it's just a little electrical fault we'll we'll sort that out there's no problems with the car mr collects turns out there was so what i'm doing and there's going to be enough of a delay in this video where hopefully no one who is involved is going to find out but i went to a tire specialist nearby i told me the situation i said look they're putting it down to wear and tear over the last two thousand miles and he said no that's rubbish that that's been going on for a while so i said well what would you what would you suggest that i do he said go to another dealership go to another toyota and get a 24 point check which is what i'm doing so on friday next week i'm going to milton Keynes at 8 30 in the morning i'm getting a free 24 point check and then hopefully it's going to bring up a couple of red flags saying that the tires aren't looking too healthy and i can then go back to my local dealer and be like here you go mr toyota your dealership down the road has said that your tires aren't fit for purpose uh, and I mean, they're only 
I say only, I think they were going to charge £170 per tyre to replace, which is, is not on, in my opinion, not less than three months after owning the vehicle. So I'll keep you guys updated as to what happens with that. Because, you know, life's a bit shit sometimes. And, and sometimes you've got to go down to a dealership. You've got to get yourself a free cup of coffee or two. And you got to go in nice and... I actually stayed calm the whole time. i got to admit, when I first got in there, I had the old adrenaline going. And my, I could feel my heartbeat going in my, in my throat. I thought, oh, I'm going to fucking go mad in a minute. Uh, but then it was all right. It was all right. Thankfully, everything was calm. So we, we should be good. So I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, they're going to call us on Monday in regards to the bit at the back, the £980 part of the repairs that need to be done. Uh, but it's a case of doing that as and when the parts are available. Um, but yeah, just be be aware. If you feel like you're being done over by um, a multi-billion pound company and a multi-million pound dealership, stand your ground. And you might just get somewhere. As long as you stay calm, collected, and don't F and Jeff, and you enjoy the free coffee. That was a bit of a ramble. There's going to be lots of mid-roll uh, credits, credits, mid-roll ads, and we'll hopefully go some way to paying for the tyre that I've actually got to replace. Au revoir. <laughs>